So uh, Arecibo, as we all know, is, is in uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, Arecibo, one of the reasons they picked it, it's a, uh, they had to find a place with a natural sinkhole. The, so we put in the dish, the first uh, mesh that was made back then, it was half inch chicken mesh, okay? So that's what we did across the thousand feet, and that's the installation of that. And it got inaugurated in uh, November 1st, 1963. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of the science from then was basically atmospheric studies. It was just, it was named originally the Arecibo Ionospheric Observatory. So we saw that we had a lot more capabilities to do that, but we needed to upgrade. So the first upgrade project we did was to change the reflector. We needed to change the reflector to go higher in frequency. So we got rid of the, the, uh, the chicken mesh. So now with the new surface, which now when we measured it, the RMS error across the 1,000 feet is less than three millimeter, okay? So now we can do high frequency observations. One of the things that we do, looking for hydrogen, neutral hydrogen in galaxies, okay? So now we can do that, and that emits at 1420 megahertz. So now we can do that. Apart from that, we added a 2380 megahertz radar for planetary studies, okay? Then in 74, discovered 1913 plus 16, a pulsar. A lot of people ask, okay, so what, what, what have you guys discovered and what uh, was your contribution? A lot of things, so it's, uh, many things that we can't fit on this page, but a couple of things were uh, people thought that Mercury rotated 88 days and we found out it was only uh, 59 days and we found out that uh, Mercury had ice. Uh, a lot of contributions in atmospheric uh, studies and also in the 80s and 90s, all the maps for Venus were done at the observatory. Venus is is enshrouded with clouds. You can't see the surface unless you do radar. So we did that also. The first extrasolar planets were also discovered in Arecibo that in our galaxy alone, there are like billions and billions of stars in our galaxy. And there are billions and billions of galaxies. So if, if you think there are more stars in the galaxy than there are grains of sand on Earth. So we got this, now we need in a second upgrade. Okay, the second upgrade, we had to put in a ground screen, uh, replace the line feed with a, with a Gregorian reflector system. We had new receivers, a new now, and the surface accuracy now is less than two millimeter. Now that's the way it looked in 1998, and that was, that was one, of the, uh, the last, one of the last upgrades we did. So with those upgrades, now we use for atmospheric sciences, we use that 430 megahertz antenna, which is that long needle look like antenna and that's the one that uh, that when pointing down illuminates the whole dish the transmitter on that is capable of 2.5 megawatts pulsed okay 2.5 megawatts pulsed with about 60 db gain but uh, then we have the planetary radar system where we bounce the signals off the planets and uh, asteroids and comets you'll see something like something like this okay but now this one it works real close to your microwave oven frequency. It works at 2380 megahertz. Now this is good for a contest. This one, this one puts out one megawatt CW, okay, one, with 70 dB gain, okay? So when we're transmitting one megawatt, we're transmitting 20 times 10 to the 12 watts, 20 terawatts, okay? So it, you don't, when this is on, People don't want to be around that area, we're too close.